Okay, tell me the story again. Well, the house was being uh, habitated by a bunch of speed freaks, including us, and they were all freaking out about the landlord. The landlord actually had a secret attic room upstairs that he had killed people in and had a secret passageway leading up to it. You, know, you open the cab, you open the cabinet, and the, and the back of the cabinet slides up, and there's a crawl space that leads up into a room in the attic <coughs> that has blood from cover, all covering all the way down the stairs, all over. The blood and mattress is soaked. There's chains on the floor, like you, there's a corner where you can wall them up in the wall, like, and it's so well insulated you can't hear it from the outside. Uh -huh. But nobody knew if it was there or not. So all these speed freaks are in the house freaking out about the landlord and uh -huh. the rumors, and turned out it was true. Uh -huh. So the house eventually just got evacuated. <laughs> one by one, so I was like the last person left there, and yeah. I, I knew where the room was, and that's where I would go to be alone sometimes. You know, but you you went to <laughs> so that I, room to be alone because <laughs> nobody would go in there. It, it was, and it took like six months for another. How could you still be living in there? The after landlord the is the one that showed it to me and my boyfriend. That's how we. That's how we found it. So wait, the did landlord he get entrusted busted? us to it because we lived in the house itself. So he entrusted us to the house and his access to his secret room. Which, the, there was a back house on the property. There used to be a meth house that was made in there. He, he freaked out and ran away. The house was filled with a bunch of tweakers that lived in the backyard of the house in a little shack. Mm -hmm. And the shack had like a painting on the wall and would open up into a midget room. And there'd be like panels and you just crawl spaces all around and all over the side of it. Mm -hmm. and, and the house itself, you know, had been completely morphed into this, this thing. So. Did this guy ever get caught? No, and in fact, if they ever found that room, my fingers would be the one all over the crime scene because I used to sit there reading How and play music, you... and, which is really sick because if you think about it, I could have gotten killed that way. I mean, this is something I did that was really sick and twisted. There's a corner of it that was walled up with carpet, but when you pull the carpet down, it's a shelf to lock somebody in. There's like little straps on the inside, you know, mm -hmm. and you, know, you just drug them and put them in there. And I just had this morbid, like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what I was doing. I, I got in there and I walled myself up behind the carpet and fell asleep for like 45 minutes up there. Yeah. You know, but I mean, it's it's real. It's there. It's right next to a church. It's on the corner of Richmond and Skillman. There's a church there, and then the house that had been like the speed freak house for 30 years. You know, I had all these, all that stuff going on with it. <laughs> so, who were his victims? What kind of people did he murder? That's not. That's a different. That's not. A, yeah, that's not a part of the story. No, I'm not talking the story, about the story. The story about the What house type of people? That. What type of people? Oh, so he did. Yeah. He, he did speed freaks. The reason why the secret room was originally made was because him and his son were wanted by the FBI because he released a chemical cloud over Irving. <laughs> like, so that they were trying to hide from the FBI originally, and then they ended up, you know, using it to that. And, and we were entrusted with it, so like, I felt safe up there. Ironically, we've been killed up there, but you know. <laughs> It is a trip, you know, I mean, that's the end you know, of the road around there. One time I saw, I, I would see a ghost come out of, like, saw a man come out of the ceiling and walk through, he'd come out of the ceiling in the middle of the kitchen and walk out the window. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Where, where is he? Why is a guy coming? I'm, I'm a high end speed because I shot at speed though for a year and a half. And I watch everybody, everybody, everybody freak out. I'm like, I'm seeing a guy come out of the ceiling and walk through the kitchen. And so I tell the landlord's best friend, who was the, the main confidant in the story, um, and he says, well, there's actually a pa another passageway that goes up to the secret room that goes to the kitchen that's been boarded up. <laughs> and I'm like, cool. And I, went, I just like, ripped it wide open, and, which, you know, scared my boyfriend. I'm like, so I opened up the passageway, that passageway, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that house is still there. We can go check it out. I mean, but the thing is, getting in. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm I mean, going to go would, to that I house. I would lock myself in the house for two weeks because I was so high shooting should, at speed. I only wanted to make art. I'd block off the door, and I'd lock myself in there. Like my side of the house, I locked myself in. But um, you, to get in is like difficult because the gate looks like a gate, but it's not, and it turns this way, and then windows appear and disappear. And it's like, <laughs> you know, he, he had a hoist up in the tree. <laughs> like you can imagine the speed freaks walking through our past our creepy big house to the shack in the back, and there's a hoist above them the whole time. We were standing in a tree, and we could have a right above them, and I could grab them out of the path. And nobody ever looked up, you know. So it's it's, it's just ongoing. I mean. And his son died as soon as he had a uh, car. <laughs> so, I don't know, I, I, I've always wanted to show it to somebody because it's really there. And, but yeah. I'm probably the only one that could go in there because <laughs> you, you, you don't want to go in that attic by yourself. I, mean, cause, I, I you don't want to go in that house. That's, that's the end of the road. Oh, I lived there for a year and a half and that was, I was the last person left. I was the very last person left and my ex-boyfriend, he, he, he was so high on speed, he hit me in the face with a bat while I was sleeping because it was just, I mean, ah, tweaker freaking out shit. <laughs> that um, I was the only person left there in the house, and that's when I didn't feel safe anymore. You know, like, okay. 
it's time to go. So I went to Lindell House and <laughs> Cameron House and Parrot House. <laughs> I'm done. Did you say Parrot House? <laughs> yes. Oh. Well, cool. I mean, you might need a translator for that. No. I'll talk to my agent and say, <laughs> I went to the church. I started going to the church on Sundays to see what kind of people were in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. It was a strange thing because you can, the window is, is locked. It, like, there's a small window that's like in the way that is, is like nailed shut. But in, in just right angle, you shouldn't see the church from that room. So I can imagine somebody dying in that room and seeing, seeing the church on the cross on the top of the church. I was like, that's fucking sick. Yeah. And so I unboarded the window and, started, and I was like, cool, I have another way to get in the room now from the roof, <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. So that would be the way that I know now because um, the, the, the floor is missing. He took up the floor. Wow. <laughs> you know, sometimes people like, try to break in and there's the legend of the lost back, the lost 20 that was lost on the floor. When he dug up the bodies, he lost a, a, an eight ball of speed. And so there's tweakers looking for eight balls of speed who invariably dropped their, their bag of speed, <laughs> thus renewing that egg. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Oh boy, but that I mean that is really funny if you think about it. There really was a serial killer landlord in the house the whole time I went to the room. And all these people that were so high on speed freaking out about all this shit. It was really real. <laughs> but you know, they it man. <laughs> so that's why when I learned not to be paranoid. I, I had a gun and my roommate, Dave Schaefer, shot holes in the ceiling with my gun while he was gone. It was just he, there was so, he was so scared because he knew that there's a room up there, but nobody knew what it was yet, or if it was there, or if we were all just freaking out. And so I'm like, I came back and I saw two holes in the ceiling. And I went, this kid from this like Dave, he needs my gun to shoot a hole in the ceiling. He's like, no, somebody drilled holes in the ceiling, looking down on me. I'm like, the plaster was the wrong way. So I took my gun away from the house, you know, because my ex boyfriend would run out of the house with a ma with a I mean with a machete and a mask on, you know, <laughs> you know, because he got tired of all the speed freaks going by the side of the house. So he'd run out of the main big house where we lived with the machete and chase them, chase them down the path to the back where they'd go to score their dope. And it's actually really funny to think about it. Yeah, chasing tweakers around with a, but yeah, a machete. Yeah, Richard was mouth. known for chasing people with shit. He was chasing, chasing people, speed freaks off the property. And one time he was fighting Larry, and Larry had a sledgehammer. And I, I handed it through the landlord a shovel. And you just see the landlord chasing Larry down the street. He's driving the sledgehammer going, Oh, come back, man! And the landlord's like trying to hit him with a shovel. I mean, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's almost comical in, in, in the way that, and how twisted it is. Mm -hmm. But um, as fucked up as that house was, I was probably the one person that felt the most comfortable there because I was right in the middle of the house, and I, I was supposed to tell them I'm managing my art, and like, oh, you guys are out there freaking out. You can't come in this house. Oh fuck. <laughs> and and made a bunch of art, and then Drew would break all of it. <laughs> he broke everything in the house, so I like made the whole ho inside the house a piece of, art of artwork, and then he broke it, and so I just make it into artwork again, and I wanted to play video games. <sighs> when I realized I was alone there, and I wasn't safe, <laughs> you know, at that point there by myself, um, I left everything there behind. <laughs> I went to the doll house and took my books and my weapons and my clothes. So I don't even know what the stuff of mine is still there. I mean, but I think what I heard recently from his friend is that he's rented out the bottom part of where my house was attached to the other part of the house. But the renter doesn't know anything about the whole history of that place at all. <laughs> doesn't know anything. <laughs> the person that lives there now. So it's like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, well, I wonder what would happen if I knocked on the door and told him that. I mean, <laughs> you should. No, you know what I did? What'd you do? I told the people at the church next door. <laughs> you did? <laughs> I did. How did they react? Um, what, they were surprised it wasn't during church. It was like, I didn't live there anymore. And I, was, I, was, I was drunk. I was walking from Greenville. I was like, hey. I'm, and it was red. No one got this along. I was like, I told him. <laughs> and, you know, they'd been trying to buy that house, you know. And they thought they, that landlord owned it. And the landlord doesn't own it. His sister owns it. So now that they know who, I told him who owned it, you know, so they can fucking buy it from, you know. So. <laughs> did they believe you? <laughs> yes. Then why didn't they call the police? I don't know what happened yet because I haven't been back over to over there. Oh. Uh, oh, but there's uh, it's a long history. I mean. <laughs> Wouldn't you have heard about that through your friends if it went down? Um. I don't know. You can die on that property. Wouldn't, Nothing. That would be kind of That's big like, news. It's, like, it's kind of like a no man's land. You have to understand that there's so much drug traffic there. There's so much drug traffic. It got completely left alone. Yeah. Never. I mean, 
Dude, it was like a safe corner right there on Green, mm -hmm. next to Green Mall, is on Richmond, right on the corner of Richmond. It's across from Jason Mullins. Like you can see, you can see his door from the house. Yeah. It's kind of creepy. Um, yeah. uh, Gil wouldn't come over. He's, he never visited me the whole year and a half I was there. He's like, I was too afraid to come over there. I just saw him. Gil's was, smart. That's why. He's like, it's next to church, but this is too creepy, man. Well, the, the, the fucked up thing is that it's next to a Sunday school. Yeah. So if there's a church and then there's a Sunday school, is yeah. adjacent to it. So yeah. it's like the, it's been interesting to say the least to, to live there. I kind of miss it actually, you know, it's just so, but not really, but then, it's the strangest year of my life.